So this morning I'm talking to my dad, right? He's uh, 35 plus years being a, a counselor, psychologist, corporate psychologist, and grandma and grandpa came over to take the girls so that we could record for our lovely podcast listeners or viewers. And he goes, what are you guys talking about today? And I said, we're talking about, there's this wife whose husband it hates his job and is wanting wants to find another job and they can't seem to find any peace or agreement around this discussion. Mm-hmm. And he goes, Ryan, that is a phenomenal idea. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm happy to say we're going to talk about that today and we'll see you on the other side. So I think we have to, we're going to read this, but they're a young married couple. We need to set the stage, I think, for this. Yeah, well, that was the hook. So okay. I was just well, trying to be very hooky. It was very hooky. I was hooked and I was also like, well, there's some things we got to say You were here. hooked. This is good. My yes. dad was hooked. Your dad was hooked, yes. And again, and he psychologist. had some opinions too, as, as well as I did. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try to be nice in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Before Selena, let's hear spiciness show. Not about your dad, just about the, uh, the, um, what was written into us. I often wish that we could just have our pre- talk talks recorded (laughs) just recorded (laughs) because to me sometimes they're better no not this one for me (laughs) this one was uh well that's why they're better because they're so unpolished tame it back (laughs) (laughs) so if you don't know who we are my name is ryan this is my lovely wife selena we are the faces voices founders of all things fierce Mm -hmm. in our little corner of the internet thank you for giving us your time and attention we exist to help couples become couples that are created for the glory of christ and we believe that all marriages are ultimately created for christ's glory but we need a lot of help in how to live and align ourselves with what that actually means biblically. Mm-hmm. We are Christian. We align our lives and marriage, and including parenting, which is the other side. Uh, we align all of that with what the Bible says. Not just what Ryan and Selena say, or what fancy books say, <laughs> but what the fanciest book of all says. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible. <laughs> so, thank you for joining us. Um, let's jump into this topic, Selena. So, why did you need... I'm just going to ask I you, think- why did you need... A, so why did you need to, why do you need to pull it back? I'm, I'm asking you genuinely because. Well, should we read what they wrote? Okay, okay, and, sure. And then we can. <laughs> then it might help other people understand why I might be uh, a little more. It's your good friend Anon. Was written in this week. <laughs> it's been it's been very uh, persistent. This Anon <laughs> anonymous. In case anybody needs to know that. <laughs> Uh, We are a young married couple, uh, 23 years old. My husband currently does not like the job he does, but he doesn't know what he wants to do. Anytime we talk about his job or what he wants to do, he says, I'm being rude, quote unquote. When in reality, I'm just trying to be realistic that he can't quit the job he has without having something else lined up or not even know what he wants to do. How can I support him in this decisions, in his decisions, but still be realistic with him it always turns into an argument. We're so young and we want to buy a house and have kids soon. And I just want to be prepared for the future. Mm. So lots of questions happening. Also, they're young. We are, <laughs> we're in our forties now. Almost. Hey, 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 just, okay, I just slow, turned 40. Slow your roll, Frederick. <laughs> He's going to be 40 in like a few months, like two months. He's no, practically 40. I'm, I'm a man in my thirties. Anyways, <laughs> late thirties. Dating a woman in her forties. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you. Age has done you well. Thank wife. you. So, young couple, <laughs> Just move right on from young that. couple that's married. They're probably about twenty three uh, years old. They, the husband is in a job he doesn't like. I think many of us have been there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some particulars I think that you need to draw. We have to draw out from this uh, without knowing. You know, it, it, he is the husband, and as like believers and followers of Christ, we believe that the husband is supposed to be the main provider for the family, and so. You know, she's asking, do you have something else lined up? And he's like, don't be rude. <laughs> that's what it seems like. Yeah. And she's, she, I mean, she even says like, how can I support him in his decisions? And that's, to me, that was something key, like his hmm. decisions. Well, his decisions about a job are not just his decisions alone. You are one now. And so there's some unity like that you need to, that needs to be discussed. Um, so yeah, how can, how can she be supportive? How can she approach this type of conversation? Um, and I think this can go either way but i mean in particular with the husband um that was kind of my rub because i I, i've just we've just experienced a lot of husbands that have kind of um they found they don't like what they're doing but they don't know what they want to do as if your destiny is like out there somewhere the unattainable um Mm. and there's things and so they're just kind of like it's like they're 
and I'm not saying this person is, but they just kind of usurp and they just give up and they just like, I don't want to do this. So I'm just not going to. And like, don't talk to me wife about this or you don't understand. It feels like there's just always these walls. It just feels really selfish. If I'm going to be honest, it feels really selfish. And that's what your dad said, actually. Um, (laughs) That oftentimes like younger married couples have a lot of selfishness to deal with. Always, yeah, and, and not we're, that we're out of the woods. Cause we're making we some <laughs> very much have selfish yeah. issues that we need to deal with. You do, yeah, you do. <laughs> yes. No, I, I, we have I, to, we have to make some of these assumptions as yeah. we're approaching this question. Of course, if we were able to sit down with this couple or spend any time of life living alongside them, then we could say more authoritatively, with more authority, I'll say, like you guys are dealing with these specific issues. So I think we have to kind of tackle this question generally right and so to do that i I just kind of want to walk through some of the underlying premises that are kind of embedded within this question and as we go i'm hoping that we'll just uncover uh some of the big biblical truths and how they bear their weight on Mm -hmm. the various underlying premises Mm -hmm. in other words when something is assumed to be true then we need to question is that thing actually true that's a premise Mm -hmm. or is it a false premise Mm -hmm. and so as we go through this we're going to do that kind of line by line so I think there's, let's see, how many do I have of these? I think there's like five or six premises to go through here. Didn't number them. I didn't number them. I got to use numbered <laughs> lists, not bulleted, bulleted lists. <laughs> okay. So the first underlying premise is, and Selena touched on it, is that it's good and right for a man to work and to provide for his family. Well, and I think that I just want to say too, and this might rub people the wrong way, but if you're married, then you've already said that I am, you've already committed to, to working and to providing for your family. If you can't do that, then maybe you should slow down the role on getting married if you're not ready to be providing and stepping into that role as a man. Am I right? Yes, I think. Not that you're going to know exactly what you're going to do right. the rest of your life, but you need to be ready to put your hand to the plow, whatever that is that the Lord Generally uh, puts speaking, in your yes. Hand. Yes, and uh, as a young man, that's one of the pieces of the puzzle, the, the costs that you have to count right. before you ask this woman to marry you. And that's not what he's providing. Yes, he just doesn't like where he he's doesn't like providing. his job. And we'll talk about like, okay, should we like our job? We're going to talk about that later. <laughs> but first, we just want to establish that it is good and right mm-hmm. for a husband to uh, to work and provide for his family. Right. We'll look at First uh, Timothy five eight says this. But if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for members of his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, there's a pretty strong biblical imperative here for uh, men specifically to, they're ultimately the head and the responsible party when it comes to provision Mm -hmm. uh, for not just the wife, but for the entire household. Right. But we're talking about the husband-wife dynamic here. Um, There's also one more premise that I, I didn't put in the list, but it's this idea that you need to buy a house to start a family, but we can hold that <laughs> hold that off. Um, so, do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, I don't know. I think it is good and right for a man to provide for his family. Absolutely, I'm 100 percent behind okay. that. When we got married, we didn't. I wasn't. Uh, we both had careers or jobs. I would say jobs. <laughs> we were still in college, so we both had jobs that we were working. Your life. <laughs> we were working to you know provide for our daily life and to be able to just live and exist yeah. and so and be independent and autonomous from our parents. Yeah, I, I remember when we got engaged, I worked as a janitor. No, no, I was working as a landscaper at a church. Mm-hmm. It was a, a you know, fairly big enough church to have a kid working as a landscaper mm-hmm. there um, and as a, like a mis- miscellaneous maintenance guy. And yeah. I also worked as a dishwasher. Yeah. Because well, I wasn't making enough. And I was like, I had to provide for my wife <laughs> or my, my fiance. Wife, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I ended up being a janitor for two years. Mm-hmm. That was important to us. And we, yeah. you know, and, and we also didn't want to take on a bunch of extra debt. Yeah. And so we decided to to buckle down and work hard for a few years. Guys, there's no shame in like having a job that pays the bills, right? There's no mm-hmm. shame in that. And I know we're going to talk about I think enjoying only, yeah. it versus... There's only shame to be had in laziness. Yeah. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so that's the first premise. It's good and right for a man to work. Second premise, I want to ask you about this. It's mm-hmm. good and right for a woman, for a wife, to want to be provided for. I think, yeah, I think it is good for... It's a good expectation for a wife to depend on her husband to provide for their family. And I'm not saying depend on, I don't depend on Ryan to, you know, pay all my credit card bills and just do, you know, I can just spend, spend, spend oh, okay. and do whatever we want. Well, I certainly I, pay whatever. Credit card bill. <laughs> I don't, you know. We have a work credit yeah. card that, that, yeah. It's, 
I don't, I don't depend on him to satisfy all my pleasures, right? And everything that I, every whim and whatever I want. I depend on him to provide food and shelter for our family. I depend on him to make sure that we have gas in the car and that we have a car that runs, you know, things that I know and expect him to be able to do. Can I do those things as well? Sure. So, I mean, here we are. So a husband but, should not be looking at this thing like, hey, like you want your own money to spend, like you get your own job. Right. Or like you want to, you got to pay your half. Like we've talked about this in the past. This is a roommate contractual. We're not roommates. Yeah. We're one. Okay. And as a husband, I have taken responsibility for you in, in, a, in a unique in way. In various ways. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's good and right for a wife to want that. Um, now here's the third premise. Uh, maybe we should jump to that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just stay in the order I have them here, even okay. though they're not bulleted or, or they're not numbered. So, the third premise is this a man's job should be enjoyable. And if it's not, he should seek other employment. Hmm. Now, we're getting this is, we're talking about marriage, but we're talking about how a couple processes through a yeah. job that is not ideal. Right. Now, when you say you don't like your job, it's okay, there's all kinds of conversations to be had about why do you not like your job? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is your job causing you to sin? I mean, that's a legitimate question. Mm-hmm. Uh, if that's the case, then absolutely get out of your job. Trust the Lord to provide for you. Mm-hmm. God's not going to want you to stay somewhere that you're ca- causing you to sin. I'm thinking of, I don't know, what situation where that could be the case. I, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Okay. You know, I mean, people um, can discern. You can imagine. Working at a casino. We'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> As a crap dealer, if that's even a thing. <laughs> um, so... You know, that's that's one instance where you'd want to get out of your job because it's not enjoyable, right? Or if, if a job is causing you to, you know, neglect your family. Right. That's something to consider as well. But let's take all those extra examples off mm-hmm. the table and say, I just don't like my job because I hate washing dishes. Or I don't like my job because I hate, you know, crunching numbers or whatever the job is. Mm-hmm. Or I don't like being out in the cold when it's early in the morning and I have to sit there and, you know, do construction or not sit and do construction, but you get the idea. <laughs> To work construction. Right. And so to answer this question, we have to talk about <laughs> the premise of work, okay? Work, work is good, mm-hmm. right? When God put Adam and Eve in the garden, he said, uh, work the land, basically. Yeah. Subdue the earth. Um, you know, have dominion over it. That, that was a good thing. It's not like they were sitting in, 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 garden, in the Garden of Eden and just sipping mimosas <laughs> and, uh, you know, sitting back in the lounge in their chair and that right. was it. Right. They were working the land. So work is good. But then the whole fall thing happened, <laughs> okay? And work all of a sudden was not so good. Let's mm-hmm. read Genesis 3, starting in verse 17. It says this, And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of all the day. excuse me, in pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it, you were taken for you are dust and to dust, you shall return. Okay. So that's the whole fall thing. All right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of built into fallen creation. That work Mm -hmm. is not always going to be fun. That it's going to be by toil. It's going to be by persistence and the sweat of our brow that we bring forth the produce of the earth. Now you may not be a farmer. (laughs) You may not be making bread with your hands, but you are making you're doing something that's going to bring that the sort of provision. Yeah. yeah. And so, again, if we're seeking a job purely for its enjoyment, then uh, that job doesn't exist like this side of heaven. There's there's nothing that we can do that we will wake up every day always being excited about and and ready to do. Um, right. Because it's just, it's just not perfect. Work is not perfect. And we are not perfect. Yeah. Now, does that mean you double down on a job you hate? Uh, well, no. It just means that understand that jobs aren't always great and if you dislike the job okay why do you dislike it if the reasons you dislike it are legitimate then begin to make a strategy to find another job but don't just quit cold turkey well and i think doing that with your wife right doing that with your spouse is one of the most important things they can do is having those conversations of hey i mean i was in a i was in a job um i was a marketing manager for an engineering firm and i had a boss who was pretty intense about things um i don't know he was a jerk. Yeah, he was not great. Um, and so Ryan even came in and confronted him once. I mean, this is, and I, I was, I was, 
I mean, I would wake up early, go to the gym for two hours, go to work so early so I could get off early and then go to the barn, ride my horse for two to three hours and like come home late and then just start the process. It was just so much anxiety and so much frustration and so much. Because you were trying to get the I was job. just trying to get it done and get out of there. And then we decided to refinance, refinance our first home. And I was like, Ryan, I'm going to quit this week. I think I, I think we need to, I need to get out of this because he's just like, it's unhealthy. And then he's like, but can you stay for two more weeks? Because they're going to call and verify employment. And I was like, oh my goodness, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> like it was, it was a horrible time in, in my, my life. But at the same time, I will say that the Lord has constantly used it to remind me of, of his love for me, of my value, despite whatever lack I may have in a job, um, which I don't think I lacked. He just, it he was, was yeah. a retired military guy and he was just really militant about things. And I, and it was, it was blatantly toxic. It was and pretty I mean toxic. that in actual, not yeah. in the like woke version of that word, but it was actually bad for you. Bad for me to go and in. And so as a husband, well, yeah, I stepped in and said, we need to quit that. But th- that was an objective reason, not just, you just dis- Right, but we it. talked about it. I, it wasn't we just did. like okay. I came home yeah. and was like, you know what, I quit my job. This, I mean, this yeah. was months of coming to this. And, you know, I I don't think I had much lined up, but my grandma was really ill and she was paying for caretakers to come in. And I said, well, what if I take care of you? And you can pay me like less than that or something. And so, like, God always provides, I think, that next step when you need to. But the important piece here is just don't do it alone. If it's the husband searching out another career, Talk to your wife, get her thoughts and advice and your team. Like be one in this. Yeah. You don't need to be combative about it. You're already like dealing yeah. with so much at work, obviously. Um, I, I just want to talk a little bit about work, again, the nature of work and a man who is working. Um, there's kind of, in my view, in the life of a man who works, there's two perspectives when it comes to how you approach your work. Mm-hmm. Is what I call the, the passion mentality and the craftsman mentality. And to make just a really quick distinction between them the craftsman seeks to bring value through his work whereas someone who's who's working with a passion mentality seeks to extract value from his work okay so i'd want to do something because i love it because it feeds my soul Mm -hmm. whereas a craftsman says primarily not that he doesn't enjoy his work but a craftsman said i want to do something because it brings value to the community Mm -hmm. so if you think of a craftsman who's making a table He's not trying to make you a table as an artistic expression of his passion for table making. He's making you a table because he wants to see that table last your family for generations. Mm. And so what happens is you have people in the workforce, and I'll say this, Gen, I think it's Gen Z now, they're entering the workforce, they're in it, mm-hmm. and, and maybe the late millennials, and, and a lot of early millennials like us, uh, can, they go to a job and they're like, am I passionate about this work? Does it feed my passion? And as soon as that job stops feeding that passion, that job is on the chopping block. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, am I bringing value to the community, Mm -hmm. to the world, to to the kingdom of God through this work? As as opposed to that being the primary thing. So obviously Mm -hmm. you can kind of tell by by how I'm explaining these. I think the craftsman mentality is far more in line with what the Bible teaches as an attitude toward work. Uh, One of the passages that is kind of the main work passages in Colossians 3, 23, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Not for men, that includes me. Mm. Now, do I love what we get to do? Absolutely. Do I do it simply because I love it? Well, I'll tell you what, if I did it because I loved it, I'd only do it about a quarter of the time. Yeah. And so, craftsman mentality, and so I want to challenge this husband and any husband out there, or any wife for that matter, are you approaching your work with a passion mentality, trying to harvest things from that job that are of personal importance, personal gain, to bring personal significance? Is that your primary motivation or are you primarily motivated by bringing skill to the craft that you might bring value to the community? Can, I I guess my question is, can it be both? I mean, because there, I think there were some days. It's a, it's a, I'm going to interrupt. It's a question of which one's primary. Primary, sure. Okay. So you can love what you do, but then be a craftsman worker. Yeah. Or you can love with what you do and be a passion worker. Okay. And, and then because it's your passion, it ends up being your craft as well. I'm saying that there's a primary motivation somewhere right. in there. And we, yeah. I also want to speak to this too, because again, like I said, like it's your destiny, your your dream job. Again, if you're trying to harvest something out of it, it's not out there. Like there's no, sorry to burst anybody's bubble, but like when we were young, I was like, oh yeah, we're going to do these big things and I can't wait to do this. Yeah, that's good. And we had to go through, you have to go through the steps of just kind of, 
okay, we were a janitor and a barista for a few years in our ma- early in our marriage. And then we started kind of spreading our wings into other things. And he worked for the state and I worked for a marketing, an engineering firm. And we kind of spread our wings a little bit more. And it, it just kind of was one step in front of the other. But it wasn't without prayer. It wasn't without wisdom. It wasn't without community, like seeking wisdom and from our community and our families, um, people that were ahead of us. And again, having this mentality of, like, we want to steward these jobs well, even when we don't enjoy them, even and especially when we don't enjoy them, right? How can I still be a light in a dark place? How can I still be there for someone or, you know, show up a thousand percent when I just don't want to? Well, and I would argue that part of, even if you're in a job at a young age, it's more likely you'll be in a less enjoyable job because you're a grunt. You're at the bottom of the totem pole. You have to start earning your way up to the more enjoyable. And that's good because... Well, but the part of the craft then is, this is a means by which I'm adding value to my family. Right. I'm providing. And I'm going to do the best I can at at the workplace, but I'm also going to do it regardless of how I feel because this is what I do as a man seeking to provide for my Mm. family. Amen. Okay, so we're going to move through the the last few of these fairly quickly. Another premise embedded in this question is a wife should support every decision a husband makes. Now, I know that the author didn't come out and say that, but she did say this, how can I support him in his decisions, but still be realistic with him? Yeah. And so in that if or how and then but statement that she's making, mm-hmm. she wants to support him, sees the importance of that, but then also sees the importance of being realistic. And so this kind of outlines, should a wife be supportive all the time? And the answer is just no. Some decisions are just downright foolish. Mm-hmm. And a wife who supports her husband making foolish decisions is herself a fool. Right. We're called and to be helpers, And she's relegating right? her helper, helper responsibility. Yeah. yeah. And so, some decisions are foolish, but a wife should support her husband in wise and godly decisions. Mm. Now, what if how a decision you, is unclear? Right. How do you know if it's a wise or godly decision? Well, and how we do have you... to read our Bibles, and we have to discern, and we have to pray. Well, and we have to communicate with one another. We can't be saying, well, yep. it's just rude when you ask me those things. No, we'll get to that is, part, yeah. This is not... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry, I, I wrote this one, rundown this time. So, if a decision is risky, yeah. Okay. if this husband's coming to you and saying, uh, you, know, you know I don't like my job. I've been looking at the op- other opportunities. This is something that I think is a really good fit. I can bring value mm-hmm. here. The pay is 30% less, mm-hmm. but I think the pay will be up where we need it to be within a few months or whatever, mm-hmm. right? That's a that that's a calculated risk. Right. And you know, and so as a family, you need to calculate that risk and then here's the encouragement. Once you pull the trigger on that, if you do, don't throw it in his face if yeah, it fails. Yeah, don't look back and throw it in his it, face. It, you like can. you're taking the step together. So yeah. don't put don't say, "Yeah, I approve." And then if he doesn't if it doesn't materialize then you to both jump throw in. it in his face yes. six months down the line you, and now you've yep. furthered the division both jump in it's not one of you got yeah. one foot in and the other's got two you're and so together in that sense i think a wife should be recklessly supportive of her right. husband in a really good way and it's in agreement um this is when selena was talking about um a wife should be able to ask her husband about his career paths or plans whenever however <laughs> that's that premise is kind of baked into this because she said well, this, the, anytime we talk, yes, but gets however, irritated. the however is important because uh-huh. wives can come across very policing and very um, yep, just interrogating naggy. and, yep. and naggy. And yeah. she just, you know, if you're just thinking about what you want, the house and the kids, um, then you're then there's there's yeah. so much more to be had to the conversation, right? And and I'm not saying that's it's just boiling down to this and that, and that's what they've said. There, um, but yeah. there there's there's a way to go about these conversations. You know, if he's saying you're being rude, and he gets irritated, well, have I mean, why do you, why does he get irritated? Is it have, is it that's the wrong the time to bring up this this conversation, or it, are you being naggy about it? Are you doing it from a place of encouragement and you want to understand him because those will take on very tones and those will come across very differently um, yeah. when you are actually talking about it. So there's almost a million ways to complain, right? And one of the yeah. ways wives can complain is by asking questions a certain way at a certain time in a certain context. And so like, well, you're going to do this. Did you do this? You take care of this. I'm just asking questions, Yeah. but really I'm kind of, I'm nagging you. I'm, yeah. I'm complaining. And so there is a there is a way to be sensitive, or there's a way to complain in those ways. So as a wife and as a husband, because husbands yeah. can do it too, we need to be mindful of yeah the yeah. timing and the tone because there's virtually like you could ask the same question ten different ways, and yeah. nine of those ways would be wrong. And I do 
Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think a wife should act- absolutely be able to ask her husband and they should be talking. Talking about a job is a, a mutual thing. It's not something that they should be doing because uh-huh. if the husband's providing and the woman's depending, like there's got to be conversation yeah. around that. Around Again, with that. the exception of like, yeah, my, my my boss asked me to embezzle today or right, sign off right, on something, right, right. so I quit. Mm-hmm. because right. absolutely. He, like Support that's obviously you, 100%. In a different circumstance. So if, but now in the other time, if, if it comes up, if you're bringing this up in times when the chances of productive conversation are good mm-hmm. and still the husband is mm. getting irritated, yeah. um, then he's shrugging off the question. He's avoiding the question. Uh, he's not, that husband needs to be called to the carpets. You're not doing anything to assure your wife. You're not doing anything to, to, yeah. to, uh, to lead her through this. Right. You're just leaving her to process it with all these variables that she clearly doesn't understand what's going on. And yeah. you're either avoiding it or you're not sharing yes. what's happening. Yep. And so that's on the husband. He needs to open up, like grow into emotional maturity and let yeah. your wife partake in what's happening in your mind. And on that note, I want to read from 1 Peter 3, 7. It says this, Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the, grace of, li- <laughs> of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. And yeah, that's funny. That verse always gets people ruffled. We always talk uh, about it. He's talking about the stature of a woman, right? Yes. It's a weaker vessel. Women are, are physically not as strong as men, no matter how much <laughs> they can squat. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I mean, it just speaks to Ephesians 5 and again, you know, this, the husband giving himself up and, and loving his wife as Christ loved the, loves the church. So an act of love is communicating with your wife. An act of love is sharing, okay, yeah. these are the reasons why I feel irritated when we have these conversations or these are the reasons why I want to quit my job. What do you think? And and that that is an act of love to open up that door. It's not loving to keep your wife at bay for that. Right. Right. So, how do we encourage this couple? Now, so yeah. we have some very tangible encouragements. If this sounds like you, or if you're actually this couple, here we go. Moving forward, <laughs> what might you do? Number one, keep talking. Yeah. It may be tempting at this time to resign yourselves yeah. to this dysfunction because you just haven't been able to find a peaceful conversation around it. Uh, but you got to keep talking. Don't be passive. Uh, it's unsustainable to do so. Right. It's a stepping stone into yeah. the future of your marriage as well, because how yeah. you can, how you deal with this conflict now is going to really uh, determine, I think, how you're able to approach other uh, difficult choices, life changes, everything that comes along with being married yeah. longer together. So, number one, keep talking, like we just said. Number two, get counsel from wiser people. You're young. Mm-hmm. Okay, go ask others. What do you think? Here's what our job situation is. Right. Here's our financial situation. Yeah. How can we find a way forward where I can get out of this job? Now, yeah. and this is the trick. You have to actually do what they advise you to do. Yeah, and be open to Take it. Take it to heart because unpracticed wisdom is just informed foolishness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need to put the wisdom into practice. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just an informed fool. Um, so that's number two. Yeah. Number three. What's number three? Pray together about your next steps. So again, praying for agreement, praying for unity, um, asking the Lord to lead you to make it clear um, of course, he's not going to lead you with a cloud of smoke and, you know, fire by day like he did the Israelites through the desert, right? But I think we can genuinely both say that when we decided to take a step in a different direction in terms of our jobs or career and we we sought wisdom, we kept talking, we prayed together, the Lord was clear in answering uh, and directing our steps. And so I think that praying, expecting, asking, petitioning. And even when you don't know the clear route forward, stay faithful. Yes. And oftentimes... God, I, I'm going to amend what you said, because God hasn't always been really clear with us, but he's led us in hindsight. We thought, oh, yeah, he was leading us the whole time. And okay, I could have I never think, made those decisions yes. unless God was just kind of leading us well, with a carrot on a stick. It's what it felt like. Yes, yes. We thought I think we were going for It's a, okay to a, have carrots. We arrived for reason B. Yes. And stayed God for reason just, B. Yes. Um, Amen. Amen. Yes. And so uh, keep talking. Yeah. Get wisdom. Get counsel. Pray together. This one is huge and irreplaceable. Read the Bible in context yeah, together. together. No other books. Yeah. No other book. The Bible. Yeah. Read it in context together as much as you can. Yeah. And the reason I'm saying this is because this is where we start to get wisdom. If you're a young couple, I wish someone would have come up alongside us at year three of our marriage because mm-hmm. we got married in 20, year three, and said, read your Bible every year together. Yeah. At this far in, we'd have, we, we would have read our Bibles together almost mm. over two dozen times. Right. 
We've read our Bibles, but just not together usually. Right. We'll talk about what different right. readings we've been doing, but we're actually going through the Bible, our reading plan together. Right. And so the wisdom that comes from that is it, you can't find it anywhere else in any other book, so read right. the Bible together. Yep. And the final step is this, is when God leads, because He will, mm -hmm. trust Him and obey Him. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot easier said than done, but still the Holy Spirit is with you to help you, and which leads nicely into the finishing part mm -hmm. of this video, which is... The Holy Spirit comes only because Jesus has sent him to those who are regenerate mm. in the grace of Christ. So I think we oftentimes as believers, we take for granted the peace and the joy and the just the, the, the fortitude yeah. that the, the Holy Spirit gives us in the daily ups and downs of life. Mm. And so if you're not in Christ, if you don't know who Jesus is, if you haven't said to him, you are my savior, I need you, mm. we want to give you that opportunity because the reality is this, we're all sinners in need of grace. Mm -hmm. And the other reality is greater is that Jesus died for sinners so that he might give them grace. Mm. So if you want to be in the family of Christ, you want to be in the family of God, we want to invite you to check out this website, thenewsisgood.com. There's information there and steps you can take down that path. Let's pray. Father God, I pray for this couple. I pray for other couples that are dealing with this, maybe a similar situation, trying to figure out how to... Uh, transition from one job to another. I pray that you'd give them otherworldly wisdom. Mm -hmm. I pray that this episode gave them just something to grab onto, something to help them take the next step down that path. I also pray for couples that are just struggling in general. They mm -hmm. can't seem to find peace in the home. They can't seem to find uh, health in how their intimate lives or in their communication or maybe their finances are a mess. Lord, strengthen them, give them hope, and Lord, give them wisdom. Mm. You've not called us into salvation that you might abandon us on the road, but you will take us all the way there. So we trust that you will do it. We ask that you do it in our lives. In your name, amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. If you are still here, that means you're probably enjoying this content. We want to invite you to be a part of our tight-knit Patreon community. Mm -hmm. If that, uh, that is community is one of the reasons we're still here, because amen. the last two years have not been easy on the whole economic front <laughs> but our patrons have been the bulwark yes, that have shielded you, us Lord. from thank the you, storms Lord. of the economy so yes. uh, go to fiercemarriage.com slash partner and there will be some uh, details there we'd be honored to have your partnership that said this episode of fierce marriages we'll see you again in seven days until next time stay fierce